Hi, welcome to Friesland Community Church. My name's Darren. I'm one of the pastors here, and thanks for being with us today. We're continuing in our series of Lent, 40 days of reflection, repentance, and renewal. We're just taking the time before Easter, the 40 days, to set ourselves up like the historical church has done, to, to maybe reflect and, and renew our souls. Because we live in a world that's fast-paced and loud. And we, more often than not, need to slow down a little bit. Because God calls us that to slow down so we can rest and renew. And we're setting ourselves up with these spiritual disciplines that we're learning about. Week one, we talked about silence and solitude. Last week, we talked about fasting and feasting. And this week at our in-person service, we broke that fast with a feast. And it was amazing to see the abundance of food. See, we don't need anything but Jesus, but God is so abundant in his giving to us that we get more than we ever need. And the food we had on Sunday was more than any of us could eat together. It was so great to do that. And the community and around it was amazing too. And it was just one of the ways to practice a spiritual discipline together. Today we're going to be talking about Sabbath and retreat. And this is just kind of actually building upon the silence and solitude that we learned in week one. We're going to get into that in just a moment. Would you please join me in a word of prayer as we open? Lord, I thank you so much that you give us these disciplines to do together so that we can be transformed into the image of you, Jesus. Help us to hear so that we can live the life you've called us to, to be free from the bondage of sin and slavery. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sabbath and retreat. Again, like I said, are just expounding upon the silence and solitude. Silence and solitude is moments, maybe hours. But Sabbath is a day set aside during the week, once a week, that we worship God and rest. See, in the Old Testament, in the Ten Commandments, that was one of the things that God had said to his people. In Deuteronomy 5, and it was starting in 12 and 15, here's what Moses said, or God said through Moses. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall, do no, do, you shall not do any work. Neither you, nor your son, or your daughter, or your manservant, or your maidservant, nor your ox, or your donkey, or any animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. See, the Sabbath reminds us that we are not slaves. Now, you may be sitting here saying, Darren, I'm not a slave, nor have I ever been. But that's what he was telling the Israelites, that they were slaves in Egypt. And if you know the story of the Exodus, the more that the Israelites wanted to go worship God, the harder they made them work. They took away resources and worked their fingers to the bone. Again, we're not slaves, but are we? I would ask you, how many hours a week do you work? Not just at your main job, but maybe your side hustle too. Because I dare say that those of us that would be here, and we would say that I probably don't work 40 hours. I work way more. And Americans, we kind of wear that as a badge of honor. You know how many hours I work this week? And I've caught myself saying that. I'm working 80 hours a week. I haven't had a day off in two months. It's not a badge of pride, but we wear it as one. It actually shows that we're slaves to our work. And in our culture, we may prize work. And work is good and necessary. We need to do it. But God has instituted that for the Israelites. And before we go any further, I need, to under, I need you to understand that I know that this one commandment out of all of the ten 
is the only one that was not specifically reiterated in the New Testament. So I know that that's not necessarily a command for Christians, but I believe it is a gift for Christians rooted in Old Testament law. And I'll show you why I believe it is a gift that God has for you and me. And I think it's necessary that we do these things because I've run hard, I've run fast. And what I've learned, I need a day a week to take off, to recharge, renew. Because the longer I work without a day off, the less productive I get. And speaking with a counselor that I've had, he says, actually, that's kind of almost law. Like, he sees that with everyone who comes in there. He always asks, when's the last time you had a day off? And this guy works specifically with pastors. And what I find is I'm much more productive when I get a full day off a week where I can disconnect. I'm not necessarily doing any housework or yard work or anything like that. And I'm actually disconnecting. Now, we don't always get that every week, but we need to institute these regular rhythms of weekly Sabbath so we can recharge and remind ourselves that we are not slaves. Sabbath actually should be a source of joy for us. If we're not getting a source of joy while we Sabbath, we may be doing it wrong. I remember growing up, and again, I'm not knocking the way people did Sabbath back when I was a kid, but it was almost like a legalism to some extent. And we couldn't do this and couldn't do that on that day. And some of the rules behind them were just kind of odd. We couldn't go, you know, play or bike too far or go to the store. And, and yeah, I understand there's some reasoning here, but it almost became a punishment, not joy. In Isaiah, the prophet says this, if you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's day holy and honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and doing as you please or speaking this word, idle words, check this, then you will find your joy in the Lord. Did you catch that? You will find your joy in the Lord. And then he continues, and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God says if we Sabbath and find joy in it and not trample on it in a legalistic way, or or in a licensed way, we're not only going to find joy, he's going to help us rise to the heights. See, in Jesus' day, the Pharisees had taken Sabbath to a new art form, legalism, that is. They marked out the number of steps you could take and the number of things you could do. And they had all these little caveats in there. They had, Pharisees had accused Jesus at one point when he healed the guy on the Sabbath. You, you, you sinned. You sinned by healing a guy on the Sabbath. But is that what the Sabbath is about? They couldn't see up beyond the rules. They didn't know the joy. Yes, there is a holy and set-apartness, but in reality, we need to be finding joy, reminding ourselves that we are not slaves to our work, nor to the Sabbath for that matter. Are you finding joy in your Sabbath? Sabbath is also rest for us. In Exodus 20, 9 through 10, and this again, this is the Ten Commandments. It says, six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter, your male or female servant, nor your animals nor any foreigners residing in your town." It's for us to get rest, to recharge, as well as worshiping the Lord. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. When we worship Jesus and take that Sabbath day to disconnect from our work, it's Jesus giving us that weekly reminder of his rest that we have 
in Him. Sabbath is a weekly rhythm that we should set up. And, and hear me out, it doesn't have to be Sunday because the original Sabbath was a Saturday. The early church moved it to Sunday to be the Lord's Day where Jesus rose. We celebrate that risen Savior on every Sunday. So they moved the Sabbath to a Sunday. And those of us that work on Sundays, maybe we get a different day off and find ways to worship God, gather with God's people some way, shape, or form during the week. My Sabbath is Friday or Saturday because I'm here at church early and I continue to work in the afternoon. I go home for lunch and then come back and work a little bit more. My Sabbath is a different day. And I don't always do well with it. But I know when I'm not doing well consistently at Sabbathing, I don't have rest. I don't have joy. And I'm definitely being more like a slave than I am free in Jesus. Our next topic is retreat. And retreat is a little bit longer area of time where we break. Whether it's a weekend or a week long or maybe even a little bit longer than that. Every fall, we go up to Silver Birch for a fall retreat for our middle schoolers. It is a time of fun, disconnecting from the everyday, but also worshiping God and hearing good word from Him as well. See, when we take extended time to focus in on Jesus, retreat provides us for a space for restoration. So many times we come back from these retreats, whether it was Ravencrest from the high school or or with middle school retreat, we're more restored because we've heard from God, we've slowed down from our everyday pace for an extended time, and we're able to hear. In Psalm 23, 1, the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. He restores us when we lie down for an extended time, worshiping, gathering together. It helps us restore and get some Restoration for our soul, our bodies, our spirit, and our mind. I know when I come back from a treat, I'm much more focused than I am before I went. Retreat also provides a space for reorientation. In Proverbs 29, 18, the, the proverb writer says, Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. When we go on a retreat, we take focused time to hear and sit under the word of God to worship and get that reorientation. Not just a weekly reorientation, because let's be honest, we come to church on Sunday We come in, we've been running a million miles an hour, we sit down, we sing some songs, we hear Darren or some other preacher preach, and then we go out right back at it again on Monday. We don't have time to process. We don't have time to to really meditate on what God was telling us. But when we retreat, we have that extended time that we can hear, meditate, and reorientate ourselves. Retreat also provides a space for communion with one another and God. While I don't have a verse for this, I've seen it time and time again. That's why we take our students on retreats. We, we go to Silver Birch to, to get good teaching, to be out in nature together, to commune together. When we go to Ravencrest, there's always someone that comes back with a much better spiritual orientation with God and each other. Every time our groups come back, we are much more tight-knit together. So it helps us vertically with communion with God and horizontally with one another. When we do these retreats together, there's always something special. Our first time we went out to Ravencrest when I was first here, talk about a story in the guy's cabin that we were all goofing around and it was lights out and all of a sudden we turned off the lights went to bed and boom one of the bunks had slipped and one of the guys had fallen on the guy in the bottom bunk 
We still talk about that story. We laugh about it. It was this communion with one another. And I, I heard students come back and they were challenged in their faith after that trip as well. It happens. Communion happens during retreat. That's why there's these weekend to remembers. If you've ever been on a husband and wife tr- retreat, you come back with a, a better understanding of who you are as husband and wife and who you are in relationship to Jesus. I've seen so many marriages restored from doing these weekends. Their marriages maybe were maybe not on the rocks totally, but they definitely weren't in great space. But coming back, they were much more in sync. We have great family camps, men's camps, women's retreats, all these different retreats. And these camps that we have along the way, they provide all this. There's one up in Montello. There's one in West Bend. There's uh, one in Lake Geneva. There's Silver Birch up north. There's all these different great places to go that offer retreats. Lord willing, we're going to do a church retreat in the next year or two. That we put up a space for a family retreat where we can get to a camp and actually do that ourselves. Because that's been a conviction of mine. That we need to offer that for our church. Not just say, hey, there's a camp over here, go do that. We can do it together so we can, again, restore, have better communion together. Every time students go to camp together, they're always comes back and they have these memories and that have bonded them together. Wouldn't it be amazing if we started doing church retreats and we came back bonded together so much more that have better communion with one another? See, God offers us the gift of Sabbath and retreat, not because he needs us to do them, but because we do. God created us. He knows us. He knows we are not created to run a million miles an hour 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We need to rest. We need both a weekly rest and a longer retreat rest. When's the last time you've taken some time to do that? Maybe you're like me. Well, I can't do that right now. I've got too much on my plate. Hear these words from Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I've so much said it. I've said these words myself. I can't do that right now. I have too much. I've got too heavy of a yoke. I've been reminded by good godly men, Darren, it's not a yoke you were meant to have. Jesus says, my yoke is light and easy. But I'm dragging along this heavy yoke right now. And when I've been willing to say, you know what? I don't know how it's going to get done, but I'm going to take a break. I'm going to Sabbath. Or I'm going to plan a retreat. It always gets done. I always am much more renewed. I'm happier. I have more joy. I know this. and I still struggle with it. I'm sure you do too. But this is your reminder that Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light and you are not meant to take that burden. And maybe you have that burden because you've just been taking it all on yourself. I hope whoever needs to hear that this week hears that. Because I'm able to do much more when I have breaks. I'm much more joyful, much more productive. And speaking to my counselor, he says that's the way we're wired. No one's exempt from that. Now, to be honest with you, you also need to hear this, that maybe you've just doing all rest and retreat. 
You need to get out there and work too. That's We were created. But when we work as though the world is on our shoulders, we're taking a yoke that is not ours to take. Jesus died for the world. You don't have to. And to be honest with you, if you died for the world, it wouldn't be good enough. If I died for the world, it wouldn't be good enough. And we need reminders of that. All of us. Me. I need that reminder daily. And learning this again is a good reminder for me. Yeah, I'm going to run hard. I'm going to work hard. But I need to set up a rhythm of Sabbath and retreat so I can find my joy in the Lord, remind myself that I'm not a slave to anything and that I can have communion with my wife, communion with my friends, and communion with my Lord. And when we have that in place, life is so much better. So I challenge you to that today. Take a look. Reflect. Renew. And repent. Repentance always gets a bad rap because the church has used it wrong over the years. We've used it as a guilt trip. But repentance in God's economy is just that you are going the wrong way. I have good in store for it, but you're running towards a cliff that is at a dead end. And God is yelling at us going, Darren, you're going the wrong way. Turn around. My way is better. But I'm running so fast because it's so loud and I've got a good head of steam and no one's going to stop me. And I'm running to my demise. Maybe you are too. And when God has placed good men and good people in my path to say, Darren, it's time to repent. I've been blessed beyond measure. I'll be the first one to say it. I've had to do it, and I do it continually. Turn around. God has something better for me. And when I've done it, I've walked in it, and it feels amazing. I want that for you, too. Let's pray. Lord, your yoke is easy, and your burden is light. Lord, I pray for us as we close today that we hear these words and take them to heart so we can put into practice a a rhythm of Sabbath and retreat so we can live in that freedom, reminding ourselves we aren't slaves to anything and that when we Sabbath, we can actually have joy and have it to the full. Help us to respect you, God, for who you are. Because yes, there is some reverence about Sabbath, There's also joy to be had as well. Help us to live it out. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks again for being with us today. And we pray your time with us was blessed and encouraging. We have these Lent booklets, and we're getting close to the end of Lent. And these are just uh, booklets that we have at church to help us maybe dive a little bit deeper during the week with the topics we're talking about. So we challenge you to pick one up at church if you haven't. And... um, Just join us in this journey. We want these to be a blessing to help you put into practice some spiritual disciplines that can help you be conformed in the image of Jesus to let the Holy Spirit work in you so he can use you to bring others to life. We hope you have a great week. We'd love to see you soon in person if you can. And even if you can't, we're just glad you're here. I know there's many of us that are out there watching that can't be here for health or whatever reasons and we're glad that we're able to give you some encouragement and we just just pray a blessing over you and just pray God's goodness for your life so to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine be all glory and honor forever and ever amen we hope you have a great week bye